Hello, my name is Franz Sands. Welcome to my boxing coach. At the end of this video, you're going to have learned how to build a boxing style around feints. Um, why we do them, how we do them, um, when we do them. And this will really help you to build that versatility. Um, it's practical sequences, but there's also some sneaky stuff in there as well. Um, so this is going to be a really insightful video for you. Before we get started, why don't you join the thousands of others who've downloaded their book, The Beginner Boxer Toolkit. This book will help you set yourself on your boxing journey. From mindset to training regimes to home gyms to the 10 core skills. There's lots of stuff in there. It's something you'll come back to year after year. There's a link down below and there will be a link at the end of the video. Okay, let's get on to this and let's, let's be quick about it. Um, none of us have got time to waste. Um, so, what are feints? Well, a feint is a deception. It's a diversion. Any kind of combat sport, any kind of combat, actually, rely on relies on deception, diversion, making the opponent um, think that something's going to happen when actually, in your mind, something else is going to happen. It's vital to control the opponent, to control the space that you're in, uh, when under threat and remember boxing is a pressure business if you are not fainting you should be punching and if you're not punching you should be fainting you've got to exert that pressure so when do we do fainting well we do try and do it all the time um, this is we're going to focus particularly on long range and mid range when you're at close range I believe that fainting takes on a different form it's almost because you're in contact there's an element of feel about it as well so you you use your body to make the opponent think you're going to do something so it evolves from a sight driven uh, trigger to a a feel driven figure or, or a mix of the two so that's for another conversation and um, we're going to focus on long range and mid range so let's do it all the time all the time so that's the, a little bit of the theory let's get on to the practical of the how do we do feints okay so there are two sort of um, bits to the equation. Um, the first bit is how we do a feint. So there are three simple types of feints. The first is the hand feint, and that's where you pretend to you, you pretend that you're going to throw a shot. So it can be a jab, it can be a right hand or back hand, it could be a left hook, it could be a right hook, it could be an uppercut, any of them. Okay. So what you're doing is trying to get the opponent to think. This shot is coming, and it's going to come down this pathway. The second type of thing, then, um, is a body movement. So it could be a duck, it could be a slip, slip that way, slip, duck. All of these little things, these little body movements, these little miniature head movements, again, act as a good trigger. And the final one is the foot feint, one of my favourites. It's just there. So you'll be in front of the opponent and your front foot just goes there. Right? Three types of feint. But what you've got to think about is the type of opponent. This is when we talk about work out an opponent. Generally speaking, two big categories, two types of opponents. When you go to launch an attack, you will either deal with an offensive response or a defensive response. For an offensive or an aggressive fighter, if you go to attack them, they'll try and hit you straight back instantly, right? But for a defensive fighter, if you go to attack them, they'll look to deploy a defense first and then a shot, right? They fancy themselves as counter punches. So we have two models to deal with that. If you're fighting against an aggressive opponent or an offensive opponent, you need to think trigger defend attack we'll cover that quickly but i'm going to put a link above the video and down in the comment section that goes into more detail on that don't want to cover that too much here very quickly um you will do a feint and then you know that the opponent will will throw something back so if you feint a jab you can do you go one two three so it's in the simplest term trigger defend attack trigger Defend, attack, trigger, 
defend, attack. And three sequences. You are dealing with an aggressive opponent. So you set the situation up to fight fire with fire. Trigger, defend, attack. But what about the other opponent? The defensive opponent? Well, this is a bit more simple. Trigger, attack. Um, so think about this in, in this way. You've got an opponent in front of you. When you trigger someone, so when you go to strike a target, you've got a number of things you can think about. What target are you going to go for? Are you going to go for the head or are you going to go for the body? Uh, what trajectory are you going to go for? Are you going to attack the centre line or are you going to attack the flanks? So if you then mix all of that up, target, head or body, um, and then trajectory, centre line or flanks. When you go to attack one of those things, an opening will generally occur in one of the other areas. So if I go to attack an opponent's body, because they might bring their arm down to defend that backhand attack into their body, they might leave an opening here. If I go to attack an opponent's centre line, so if I feint a right hand or feint a jab, they might bring a block up. You can see it's opened a tiny opening here. Yeah, There's two examples. The list goes on. Generally speaking, if you go to if you go for one target or trajectory, target and trajectory, an opening will occur elsewhere. So you can build all of that in to how we deploy one of these feints. Okay? Um, so if you go to attack an opponent, let's think about let's think about five sequences. Sequence number one. I'm going to go and attack an opponent, and they're going to be the type of opponent who just likes to push away. So you show the feint, and then you go for that straight line attack. Feint, cover the ground quickly. So you deal with that. Once they've got to that furthest point, you, you're already on top of them. Um, what about if they're going to throw a backhand block? So if I show a feint with my jab, lots of boxers will go like this. Okay, They'll use a backhand block. So faint with the jab and just turn it into a hook. Faint hook. Faint hook. Faint hook. Okay, so if they're static, they're going to keep their feet still. Show the faint, draw the hand forward. Smack them with the left hook. What if they cover up? Okay, so if they do that, if you go to attack them, they go, oh, go into a double guard. Faint, bang, hook into the liver. Faint, whack. Faint, whack. Bring it in. Faint that, bring them up, smack the body. These are all little sequences. What about a single arm faint? Okay, I'm going to go for the body with a faint, faint jab. Faint jab, and I just bring it straight up to the head. So we're going for that target. We're sticking with the centre line. Going for that target. Bringing it up to that target. One, two. And it, and it can be really subtle. Turn yourself slightly off the centre line. Go to throw the jab and just take it up top. Yeah? So what you're actually doing is bringing your eyes into the faint situation. Right? And then one of my favourites, a single arm. So that's a single arm faint. Another single arm faint is the screw shot. So faint the backhand to the body and just bring it up to the head. Okay, what's that going to do? That is going to, when they see a backhand into the body coming in, they're going to drop that there, aren't they? So you just travel it up to the head. So you've got to drop the knees, you've got to sell it. That's the important thing about all of these feints. There's no use doing them half-hearted. You've really got to sell them. You've got to become adept at really passing these things off that the attack is coming. And then you can... Once you've got them in that mindset, it makes it really a much more um, manageable proposition to control them. Faint low, power high. Faint power. Faint power. Let me throw that from the side. Faint power. Can you see? My arm isn't even going out, really. What's happening is my legs are doing the faint. Faint power. Faint power. Screw shot. Fantastic. 
and then one of the sneaky ones that I really love. Um, it's always time on target, it's the delayed arrival. When you throw a punch against someone, depending upon how well trained they are, okay? Subconsciously, their brains will do lots of calculations that they won't be aware of. This is what we call instinctive sort of fighting. Anything you do often enough becomes instinctive. Their brain will make all kinds of calculations about how fast a punch is coming, what angle it's coming, and therefore when it's going to arrive. And their instinctive boxing brain will deploy some kind of defense for it. If they like using hand defenses, you can really work that against them. So you can delay the arrival of your shot. And this is really subtle. So you can jab, jab, jab. And then on the final one, you go. So you're still attacking the same target. But what you're going to do, you're going to show the jab, you're going to delay it. They're going to deploy a block. And it's going to come back because the shot hasn't come. And the shot can land. That's the move. The delayed arrival. And you can do that with the backhand as well. Muhammad Ali, that was one of his core things. Think bang. Okay, because if they see a backhand coming, they might deploy a lead hand block. Or they might do that. Or they might do that. As soon as they see that coming, up oh, bang. And it's gone. The delayed arrival. Very sneaky. Okay. Your feints. Learn them. Really get them right. Really learn to sell them. So confusion all around you. It's the key to unlocking good counterpunching, trigger defend attack. It's massive when it comes to counterpunching. And of course it's great to build pressure. Get it right, invest in it. Okay, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Um, leave us a comment um, or download your book to begin a box of toolkit. Link down below, should be a link here. Look after yourself, I'll see you in the next video.